How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how to build an 8,000 RPM small block Ford. Before I get started on this build, drop a comment below. I want to hear if you are on Team Ford or Team Chevy. A engine is only as good as its foundation. So for this build, I'm going to use a Dart SHP engine block. It has these massive billet steel four bolt main caps that are so much stronger than a factory 302 8.2 deck Ford engine. It also has true priority main oiling and is an amazing piece of engineering and foundation. The crankshaft for this build will be our Smetting 4340 forged internally balanced 3.4 stroke crank. On top of that, we're going to use a 4340 5.4 inch H-beam connecting rod with ARP 2000 hardware and a JE forged piston with some nice total seal rings. The compression ratio on this build will be about 10 and a half to 1, I think just under 10 to 1, which will be perfect for a nice pump gas everyday driver engine. In order to turn 8,000 RPM, this engine's camshaft is 252 on the intake and 260 degrees of duration at 50 on the exhaust. It's a solid lifter camshaft with about 700 thou valve lift on the intake and exhaust. What's really cool about this cam is it is a billet steel core so we can run the appropriate spring pressure without risking a groove forming in the lobe. However, because it is a street engine, we have this camshaft made with a melanized steel distributor gear. And you can see that pin right there holding this gear to the core. They're two separate pieces of material. That way we can run standard distributor gears and not have to worry about running a bronze or composite gear. Again, this engine is solid roller lifter, so it has a nice link bar lifter, and these lifters also feature high pressure pin oiling. It's very hard to pick up on camera, but right above my fingernail here, there is a tiny hole. You can just barely see it. And that little hole will deliver high pressure oil to the axles on these lifters aiding in longevity and durability. Because this engine is going to be a true street motor, we are still gonna keep it wet sump. Now this is right on the edge of what a wet sump can handle. The Ford oiling system is very efficient and I have no concerns about it cavitating at very high RPM. However, we are running the nicest wet sump pump that Melling produces. So you can see here it has this massively thick drive shaft, chromoly steel. It also has a revised cover for strength. It has a different set of gears in it, and it has a higher pressure relief built in as well. To recap, we have a super strong four bolt main billet steel cap engine block, our smetting forged crankshaft, good 4340 rods, nice forged pistons, good rings, and a very healthy street solid roller camshaft. I have already checked all the bearing clearances and gapped all the rings for this engine. Remember, these have very small journals, so I'm only running about two thousandths main clearance. On the rods, I have about 2.2 .2 to 2.5 and my rings are gapped at 20 on the top and 22 on the second. The only thing left for us to do now is fully clean all the components in the engine and we can put this bad boy together. Part one of this video is just going to be the short block assembly, but in part two, I'll show you the top end and the air induction system, the valve train system that we're gonna use to feed these 363 cubic inches at 8,000 RPM.
this timing set is super cool. So this is the thrust plate for the motor. The gear is going to go on this side and the camshaft on this side. And you can see that we have a roller bearing on this side against the camshaft. And the gear itself has a second roller bearing against the thrust plate. And all of this is to reduce internal friction and give the camshaft better thrust support inside of the engine at this high RPM. On the engine block right here, there is a small little splash oil galley that will collect oil in this little groove and lubricate the bearing for us. The Ford distributor gear is much smaller than the Chevrolet design and where it is located in the engine normally there's not too much lubrication. So on all Ford engines this oil galley plug has a 30 thousandths hole drilled into it to deliver high pressure oil straight onto the distributor and camshaft gears. That really helps them survive in the engine, especially this guy, because it's gonna turn a lot of RPM and have a little bit more load on the gears than your normal 6,000 RPM hydraulic roller engine. Before we carry on too much farther with the engine build, I want to remind you guys to keep an open mind when it comes to engine building. There's a saying I like that if you ask five engine builders how to do something, you'll get ten answers. Because the truth is, each engine builder has developed their own certain way and their own procedures of building the engine. So even in our shop, Shay and I, although we build the same engine, to the same quality and level, you'll notice slightly different procedures in some of the smaller things that we do. But what you have to remember is that as long as the end goal is correct and blueprinted and balanced correctly and machined correctly and spec correctly, the motor is going to do awesome. So if you see stuff that I do that Shay didn't do or you see stuff that Shay does that I don't do or maybe it's another engine builder. You just gotta remember, keep an open mind because there's different ways to come to the same common goal. The same saying as there's more than 10 ways to skin a cat or there's more than nine ways to skin a cat, there's a lot of ways to build a motor. This engine has five thousandths of thrust bearing clearance. I like that number a lot. So it is now time to put rods and pistons in the beast. Normal small block Ford camshafts have a 3 8 fastener bolt. However, this one has been upgraded to a 7 16 So we have even more strength and rigidity holding the camshaft timing system together.
the core of the short block is all assembled and finished up. Looking really nice. Assembly went together super smooth as you guys saw. Let me get it rolled over here. And here's the guts of the girl. So we've got those nice H-beams, the forged pistons, everything blueprinted and assembled. Super cool timing set on the front. All that's left for me now is to install the oil pump, timing cover, and oil pan. These Ford oil pumps can sometimes be tricky to install because you're going to have a gasket here and the drive shaft here and you have to flip it all upside down, put it on the engine, and then try to get those bolts lined up. So a trick that I do is I just put a little bit of thick assembly grease on the gasket surface and a shot into that uh, receiver groove for the drive shaft. That'll create a suction and then obviously the sticky assembly will hold that in place, the gasket. And now when you flip it over, you just use one finger to hold that drive shaft in place. Your gasket stays put. You can drop your bolts in there. And there you go. Okay, I'm checking to make sure the drive shaft is free and can easily rotate without interfering the block. We've got that covered. Next, check and make sure that the oil pump isn't going to be hit by the crank or the connecting rods. And we're clear on that front as well. Nice. Before I seal up the crankcase of this engine, I'm going to check the pickup tube depth in relation to the oil pan. So I've got my pickup tube already torqued down on the oil pump, wrap it in some painter's tape, put a piece of clay on top right here in the middle, it's just fine. You can even put it on the side if you want. And then without a gasket, I'll take my oil pan. And we'll feed it around and then push it against the block, just like so. Now let's pull this off. And we'll take a set of calipers. And currently we are about a quarter inch away from the bottom of the pan. Once we add the gasket, which is about maybe a hundred thou thick, we'll have right about three eighths clearance from the pickup to the oil pan. So that's perfect. Now that that is checked, I can carry on and seal up this motor. There it is in all of its glory. So to recap, 363 cubic inch small block Ford 8.2 deck. So externally it's the same size as a stock 302 or 50. We're running a Smetting 4340 forged steel crankshaft that is internally balanced with a 3.4 stroke. We have a nice 4340 forged H-beam rod with ARP 2000 hardware topped off with some nice forged JE pistons. The camshaft is billet steel with a special gear pressed on. 252, 260 degrees at 50 with about 700 valve lift. We're running a Rollmaster billet timing set with dual Torrington bearings, also known as dual thrust bearings. 
Crower high pressure pin oiling solid lifters with an ATI super dampener and of course that nice premium melling oil pump. We also have a really cool, I'm going to butcher how you pronounce this, Aviad, Aviad, Aviade metal products. So they've got a nice oil pan, it's got all the trap doors and baffle system in it. Off camera, during the mock-up stage of this build, I did already check piston to valve clearance, so I don't need to check it during this process because it's already been done, I know it's going to clear. And I have also ordered the correct length push rods and the correct thickness head gaskets. So all those parts will be here before the next video comes out. And in that video, I will show you guys the beautiful top end we're going to put on this little monster. And then in part three of the series, we're going to dyno it. So you guys can hear what a 363 cubic inch small block Ford sounds like at 8,000 RPM on our engine dyno. So make sure you subscribe to stay notified when that video comes out. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.